Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for the privilege of coming to study your word. Thank you because of your spirit that reveals the activities of the last days and the events that are going to happen in the days to come. And we're living at this close of time, the climactic of all times. Lord, we're praying that as we come together and you open the scriptures to us, we pray you grant us the spirit of understanding in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you keep us awake and keep us at alert and keep us meditating upon your word so that, Lord, you grant us real understanding and knowledge in your word in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that your intention, your purpose of sending the word to us and preserving the word for us and giving us your spirit to grant us understanding and knowledge and enlightenment, that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that many believers reading the book of Revelation do not have real understanding because these things are darkened before them. And of course, the unbelievers know nothing about the interpretation and application of this word in this part of your book. But you have given us the privilege and the spirit that will interpret and enlighten us in this word. Therefore, Lord, we are praying today, you'll grant us a grateful heart and a receptive heart that will agree and that will receive all that the spirit is revealing to us in this word in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that as we see these things uh, coming to pass, as we see these things approaching very fast, you help us to be very well prepared for the coming of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bible study once again today. And young people, I welcome you to the Bible study. This is one of the greatest places you can ever be to really study the Word of God. And it's important to study every part of the Word of God. But you understand that the different parts of the Word of God have different values and different things they're revealing to us. For example, when you read in Genesis, you're reading history already done, already gone to pass, because all those things are fulfilled already. And you have stories there, illustrations there, examples there, and you have instructions there that will help you. This is how people did in the past, and this is how I can live my life today, so I can be in the center of the will of God. When you come to Job, for example, you get some other kind of approach. Because you have the history of the man that has gone through a lot in life. And then he tells you how you can endure any sufferings and tribulations and trials that come upon you in life. You come to the Psalms and you are worshipping the Lord and praising the Lord and singing with the Psalmist. When you come to the Proverbs, you are coming to some wisdom. And there are some sentences and instructions and directions and and directives that will give you the wisdom of life and you come to ecclesiastes and things under the sun and then you begin to realize vanity of vanities all this vanity you come to the gospels and you're studying about the book of of the history of the life and ministry of jesus christ here on earth and it gives you another perspective of this revelation of the word of god you come to the acts and you're talking about the history of the church the acts of the holy spirit through the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ and then the epistles are explaining to you what it means the death of Jesus and the burial of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus and the implication for the people that believe today but when you come to the book of Revelation here is a future brought near here is a future dramatized before us here are the events and the things that are going to happen in the future and then the lord jesus christ has sent his angel that he will reveal and signify symbolize all these things to us because these are things that are soon going to come to pass they are soon going to happen that's the reason when you come to study the book of Revelation, what a special privilege and what a special time you have as you come to the book of Revelation. Not only that, you know that many people as you read the book of Revelation, if you read it by yourself, how difficult it is for you to understand. As you look at all the symbolism there and all the things that are signified there, you wonder what does this mean? And it's a great privilege that the Lord will grant us the enlightenment and the knowledge and the light of the Spirit of God that as we come to this book of Revelation, we're not coming to it as a sealed book. 
as a closed book, as a book that we cannot understand because the Holy Spirit himself is granting us understanding and knowledge of the word of God. And we have already, we have already studied chapters 1 all through chapter 12. And now we come to a very important subject matter. That is Revelation chapter 13. I'm reading to you from Revelation chapter 13. And we're looking at it from verse 1. The chapter is divided into two parts. Verses 1 to 10, part 1. Verses 11 to 18, part 2. And it is the first part we're looking at today. Revelation chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon the horns seven, ten crowns. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as, as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as seat one wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshipped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God and to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all the kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life for the lamb slain from the foundation of the world if any man has and ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience, the perseverance, and the faith of the saints. Those are the verses we're looking at today. I want to remind you that the event we're looking at is actually at the period of the Great Tribulation. This is the time of the end. That is this time we're looking at in the book of Revelation. Is the time of the end. The kingdom is about to be established. Actually, as you flip back in your Bible to Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, you will see, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign. How long? Forever and ever. And so you see that the kingdom of Christ is about to be established. Actually, if you go back again to chapter 10 and in verse 7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished as it as he has declared to his servants the prophets. That is, as we're looking at this scene, and the seventh angel is about to sound a trumpet, then we're told that the mystery of the kingdom of God or the mystery of God that have been revealed to the prophets in ages past, the culmination, the climax, the totality of that, uh, of the prophecy, the revelation, they are about to be fulfilled. And so you come to this part of the revelation and it is, uh, of course, uh, the church already had been taken away at the end of Revelation chapter 3 and then in chapters 4 and 5 we have the throne of God revealed and you have the living beings and you have the angels of God and you have the redeemed of the Lord, the saints of God, the church of God, raptured to heaven, you find them worshiping the Lord. And then in chapter 5, you find the book that was sealed. And that sealed book, you find it was in the hand of the Almighty God. There was a great announcement, declaration in heaven. Who is able to take the book? And who is able to open the seals thereof? And for a time, there was nobody to open the seal thereof. And because of that, John, the beloved, went very much because there was nobody able to take that book because that book is actually the title deed of the whole universe and if nobody is able to take that book and open that seal then the universe will not be redeemed out of the hand of the usurper and so John said I wept very much and then one of the living beings said 
John weep not. There is one, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God that was slain. And then that is risen again, is standing in the midst of the throne and is able to open the seal thereof. And then John said, and I saw him and he came. It was as if he had just been slain, but he's risen from the dead. But I can see the mark of the nails upon his hand. And then he took the book and then the whole of heaven went into celebration as they said glory and honor and worship unto the Lord and then it now starts with chapter 6 and the great tribulation actually begins in chapter 6 and the great tribulation has been going on now by the time you come to chapter 13 you are the middle of the great tribulation I need to tell you that it, the rapture takes place first and then the great tribulation and then the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ and it's the prince of peace that will bring peace into this whole world but before that peace will come, there will be, first of all, the storm and the raging storm all over the world. Before the establishment of the millennial reign, when the prince of peace will, or the prince of peace will reign, there will be the great tribulation here on the earth. And it's the storm before the calm. And, and the prince of fierce countenance will come in the time of the great tribulation before the prince of peace. And that's the reason as we're reading this, you see in the previous chapter, that is in chapter 12, we have read of the seven-headed red dragon that was cast out of heaven and cast onto the earth. And as he was cast from the heavenlies, that old serpent called the devil, Satan, he comes to the earth in great trouble because he knows that its time is short. In Revelation chapter 12, I'm reading to you from verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, reading to you from verse 9. Here it tells us that the great dragon was cast out. Who is the dragon? great dragon that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is salvation and strength and the kingdom of god of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of the of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our god day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and he loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. At this time now, the devil has but a short time, just a short time. And because he has a short time, he comes with great wrath. When it says he has a short time, how short is that time? Well, we're told in that same Revelation chapter 12, if you look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 6, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God, they, that they should feed her. There is thousand two hundred and three score days. One, two, six, zero. If you divide that by thirty, that means you are going to have forty-two months. And if you divide that by uh, twelve, you are going to have three and a half years. In fact, as you look at uh, verse fourteen, it says, "And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle." that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time, one year, and times two years, that makes three, and half a time, a three and a half years, from the space, from the face of the serpent. Come to Revelation chapter 13, reading verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. 1,260 days, or 42 months, or three and a half years, a time, times, and half a time. They all mean the same thing. That will be the period when the Antichrist will come into this world with great, great fury. That will be the last part of the Great Tribulation. And the earth will enter its final and greatest crisis, and the red seven-headed enemy of God, enemy of man, that is the dragon, the devil, Satan, will walk his final malice and rage through two of his agents or representatives on earth. Those two representatives or agents on earth are described in chapter 13. In the first part of Revelation chapter 13, we have the description of the first one, and that is the 
Antichrist. And then the second part of, the, of chapter 13 describes the second representative of the devil. And that will be the final religious leader of this world. It's referred to in the book of Revelation as the beast out of the land. It is also referred to as the false prophet. I want you to look at chapter 13 verse 1 again. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. That's the first beast. That's the first representative of the devil, of the dragon. And he receives his power from the dragon, from the serpent, from the devil. And he's the Antichrist. Look at verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. That's a false prophet. And you find in verse 11, and he had two horns like a lamb. Not a lamb, an imitation of a lamb. The devil is always trying to be a counterfeit the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the real lamb, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And here comes a lamb, but inside ravening world. And it says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The nature was the nature of a dragon, but the appearance was the appearance of a lamb. That's a false prophet right them. And these three, that is the beast rising up out of the sea, number one. And the second, the beast coming up out of the earth. Now the third, the dragon, they will walk together. And as they walk together, they will lead the world into the final rebellion against God. That will be at the time of the great revelation. I'm praying you will not be here at that time. That the Lord will count you worthy and count you righteous and holy. Along with the people of God, the saints of God. That when the saints go marching in just before the beginning of the great tribulation. You will be among the saints in Jesus name. As we look at this today, the topic is the rise and the reign of the Antichrist. The rise and the reign of the Antichrist. I'm dividing the study to three parts. Number one, the personality and the satanic power of the Antichrist. When the Antichrist comes, it's describing great details in scripture. And we're told about his personality. We're told about his attitude. We're told about his disposition. We're told about his activities. We're told about the power, the satanic power, by which he'll be operating in the world at that time. Then point number two, the profanity and the short period of the Antichrist. The blasphemy with which he'll blaspheme the name of God and the blasphemy with which he'll blaspheme everything belonging to the holy God of heaven. The profanity, the blasphemy, and the short period of time that that Antichrist will be able to operate on the face of the earth. And then you come to point number three, the program and the sealed perdition of the Antichrist. The program, what he will carry out at that time. And all the things he will do, all the program of activity from the day one that he comes on the scene until the very last day when he will be defeated by the Prince of Peace, by the land of the tribe of Judah, by the Lord Jesus Christ, the real king, when he will put him down from day one to the final day of his operation, his program, and the sealed perdition of that Antichrist. Let's come back to point number one. The personality and the satanic power of the Antichrist. I'm reading to you again Revelation chapter 13 verses 1, 2, and 3. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a great beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his own ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seed, and great authority. Verse 3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Here it says the beast. You understand that the book of Revelation is actually very, very much symbolic. And what you read about the beast here is actually talking about a man. When it says the beast here, it's talking about a man. Look at Second Peter chapter 2 verse 12. In 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 12, but these as natural brute beasts. 
made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. You see that this passage is talking about sinners, about wicked people, about unbelievers, but he likens them to natural brute beasts. And as you come back to Revelation chapter 13, and you look at verse 18, it makes it very clear. It tells us, here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Look at the number of the beast, it is the number of a man. And the number is 603 score and 6. So then, as we're talking about the beast in verse 1, it's actually a man pictured as a beast because of the nature of the beast and because of the relationship with the dragon. That's why it's called a beast. Look at it again in chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Another thing we need to explain is the word sea. Because again, that is a symbol. And the symbolism of the sea, you'll find in chapter 17, verse 15. Chapter 17, verse 15, it says, And he says unto me, The waters, the ocean, the sea, the rivers, the waters, without soest, where the walls seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And so as you read in chapter 13, verse 1, and it says, the beast is coming out, rising up out of the sea. It means that this man, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the terrible one, the one energized by Satan, by the devil, he'll be rising up out of the sea of humanity. And it will be a man. Let's go on in verse 1 again. Verse 1, that's chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And then it says in verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet like the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. You will see the composite description of that individual. And it says, number one, it's like a leopard. Number two, it's like a bear. Number three, he has also another characteristic of the lion, which means that you're going to find some different characteristics in this beast. That is in the Antichrist, a composite personality. As we come to Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7, I'm going to read to you first, verse 6, then I'll go to verse 5, then I'll go to verse 4. Because we're talking of the leopard and the bear and the lion. Look at chapter 7 of Daniel verse 6. After this I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which arch upon the back of it four wings like a fowl. And the beast that arch also four heads, and dominion was given unto it. That's actually describing the Grecian Empire. The Grecian Empire that will come after the Babylonian, after the uh, Middle Persian Empire. Come to verse 5 and behold another beast, a second, like a bear. And it raised up itself on one side. And it had three reeds in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And it said, Thus unto it arise and devour much flesh. When it says arise and devour much flesh, that means it will have military power. And with that military power, it will be able to destroy many, many people in many nations at the time that he reigns. He talks about the leopard in verse 6 and the bear in verse, in verse 5 and the lion in verse 4. Look at it in verse 4. And the force was like a lion. And had the eagle's wings. And I beheld the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. That's actually describing the Babylonian Empire. A three empires described in chapter 7, verse 4, verse 5, verse 6 of Daniel. One, the lion. That's the Babylonian Empire. Then two, the bear, the Middle Persian Empire. And then three, the leopard, the Grecian Empire. 
all the, you know the force of the Babylonians and you know the power, the authority and the extension of the kingdom of the Babylonians and then after that came the uh, Middle Persian and after that came the Grecian Empire. Now he's telling us that the beast that is still to come that is the Antichrist. He will combine the sweetness of the leopard and he will also combine that with the cruelty and the power and the might of the bear and then we'll combine that with the ferocity of the lion that is this one coming he will collect together he will combine together all the powers of the kingdom that has gone before and those parts of the kingdom that are gone before that he combines together will be able to destroy the people of the earth at that time that's describing the composite power of the antichrist when he shall come now look at daniel chapter 7 and look at it from verse 7 after this i saw in the night visions and behold the fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it has great iron teeth that's like a lion and devoured and break in pieces and stand with the residue, the residue with the feet of feet. He's describing his feet now. He comes to the he comes to the bear. And then it was diverse from all the bees that were before it. It had ten horns. It's describing the same thing that you find in the book of Revelation. And it's just telling you that that one to come will be a ferocious beast. If a sweet beast that will have wings, although like a lion, very terrible and very powerful and very mighty, but will be running so fast, like having many, many wings to run and then to conquer many nations. Then in verse 8, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and the mouth and a mouth speaking great things when he talks of the eyes of a man he's talking of insight he will see into things he will have intelligence and he'll be able to see very well that's why he'll become the antichrist will be a great political figure and he'll be able to reason in commerce, in economy, in science, in technology, and be able to galvanize all the governments of the world together at some time. Because it's horn. The horn describes strength. If you have seen some animals fighting one another, their strength is in their horn. They fight with the horn. And when he talks of the horn of the beast, he's talking of the strength of that Antichrist. And then, not only strength, eyes everywhere, insight everywhere, intelligence everywhere everywhere understanding everywhere wisdom cleverness everywhere the antichrist will be mighty the antichrist will be powerful the antichrist will be very wise will be very cunning will be very clever will be very intelligent and then he tells us in verse 19 of that same chapter 7 of daniel it says then i would know the truth of the fourth beast i wanted to know the indication and the meaning i wanted to understand the truth about this fourth beast that is terrible which was diverse from all the others exceedingly dreadful whose teeth were of iron and its nails of brass and which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet and of the ten horns i wanted to have understanding that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell even of that horn that had eyes that had intelligence and understanding and a mouth that spoke that speak uh, great very great things that is speaking blasphemy against the god of heaven whose look was more stout more terrifying terrorizing than his fellows and i beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them that he said this antichrist will fight against the children of israel the saints and will fight against anyone that will believe on the lord jesus christ at that time because the Antichrist will not be here to play with people. He will be here to fight with the nations and the tongues and the languages and everyone. And he will, he will defeat them in a very terrible way. Verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. That's a blasphemy. We read about that in Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 to 3. That this Antichrist, the beast that is coming, he will blaspheme the name of the great God of heaven. That's what Daniel is saying in chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. 
that Antichrist, he'll want to change everything that had been before him, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of a time. A time, one year. Times, two years. That makes three. And the dividing of time, half a year. That means that you have years, we've been talking about it. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. As you compare the scriptures to scripture, and as you merge all the scriptures together, it's still talking about the same person, but it clarifies some things for you. Number one, it says, in the latter time of their kingdom, in the latter part of his reign, that is, there will be seven years of the great tribulation. But the last three and a half years, the latter part, will be a terrible time. And then it says, when the transgressors are come to the full, that is, the people that are transgressing, the sinners of that time, they will come to the point of madness. And they will be so drunk with their evil. And the transgressors will come to the full. And then it says, a king of fierce countenance. That's the Antichrist. That's the beast. That's this terrible one we're studying about today. Having understanding dark sentences. That's why, that's why it says, His horns are full of eyes. Eyes for understanding. Eyes for intelligence. Eyes for knowledge. And it says over here, understanding dark sins. He shall stand up. And in verse 24 it says, And his power shall be mighty. But not by his own power, because it is Satan, the dragon, that will give the beast the power. That's why it's saying, not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully. That means he will destroy in such a way that people will wonder at him. He will destroy with such swiftness and with such a fastness that people will wonder at it. And then it says, and shall prosper and practice. That is, he will succeed in his wars against the people of God and against all the nations of the earth at that time and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, the children of Israel. And through his policy also shall cause craft to prosper in his son. That is, he will perfect, if there's any word like that, he will perfect deception. He will so deceive people by craftiness that people will not be able to discover. And then it says, he shall mightily, he, sh he shall magnify himself in his hand. And by peace shall he destroy many. That he shall come to the people and talk to them nicely and softly and gently because it will be like a lamb. He will say you are looking for a Messiah. You are looking for a deliverer. You are looking for somebody to galvanize all the governments of the world and unite them and bring them together. He will say look at the economy going down and look at all the unions who are forming and those unions are not working at all. But I have come so that everything will be so done. You will be surprised how the results will come. And then he will deceive them by that kind of peaceful talk and then it says and he shall also stand up against the prince of princes when christ eventually will come at the end of the great tribulation this antichrist he will want to withstand the the prince of peace the prince of princes but he the antichrist shall be broken without hands that is uh, telling us how everything eventually will end in Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, reading from verse 26 and verse 27. And after three score and two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off. That's talking about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been talking about it from verse 25, actually from verse 24. And then it says, but not for himself. His death is not because he has sinned. The death of the Messiah is for the sins of the world and the people of the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The prince that shall come, that's the beast we are studying about. That's the prince of fierce countenance. That is the Antichrist. He shall come and he will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. You remember we studied that the flood is a flood of armies. And then it says unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That is when the Antichrist comes, he'll say, just seven years, I'll be through. 
Seven years I'm going to have this covenant with you and the people of Israel. And all these problems between the Palestinians and the Israeli people and the Middle East, I'll settle everything within seven years of a surprise. It will be a marvel to you, the kind of peace I'll bring to the Middle East. And everybody is looking for peace in the Middle East. And they want Israel and the Palestinians and everybody to, to live together in fellowship and friendship and unity. And so they'll fall for that. And then it says, in the Middle of the week, three and a half days, representing three and a half years, shall he cause the sacrifice and, oblig and the oblation to cease. No more worship of God. And he'll say, Now there's an edict, there's a law. Anybody that calls on any other God, I'll deal with him. And then for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make each desolate, even to the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. It will be a time of Jacob's trouble, a time of real suffering. When this uh, prince of fierce countenance shall come, that is the Antichrist, that is the beast we're studying about in Revelation chapter 13. Look at Daniel chapter 11, reading from verse 36. Daniel chapter 11 from verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will. He's talking about the Antichrist. He will be a law to himself. Anything he wanted to do, he will do. Because he will not have any regard for God. He will not have any regard for any man. And he will not have any regard for any law of any nation. He, the king, shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods. He will blaspheme. And he will put the name of God down. And then he shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. That is, all these things that are prophesied, they are determined already in the calendar of God. It shall be done. In verse 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. He will not want to worship the God of heaven. Why would he want to worship the God of heaven? He wants to be a God himself. And then he says, and the desire of, the, not the desire of women. What do you think that means? In the land of Israel, many, many years after they had heard about the prophecy of Isaiah, a virgin shall conceive, conceive and be a child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. It became the desire of every woman in Israel. Oh God, if you'll choose me, maybe I'll be that virgin. Maybe I'll be that one that will bring in the desire of the nations, that will bring in the Messiah. And then it says, he will not have regard for the desire of women. That he shall not have regard for the Messiah, for, for the Lord Jesus Christ that came as a fulfillment of the desire of the women. No regard for any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. He'll magnify himself above the Most High. He'll magnify himself above the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll magnify himself above the nation of Israel, the saints of God. In verse 38, and in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. The only thing he will know is power, might, army, force. And then it says, And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver. That is, he'll give so much money to armies. He'll give so much money to military, uh, military, uh, military power, military organization, military administration. His budget, his budget will not be dealing with people getting health or getting education. What, does he, what concerns the Antichrist with health? Or with education his budget will be mainly a budget for the military because all that he's going to do will be with armies and then it says and with precious stones and pleasant things and those shall he do in the most in the most strongholds with a strange god whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain uh, you see here what we're learning about the antichrist then we're told in verse 45 and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him the devil will come to an end the Antichrist will come to an end. And then Jesus Christ will reign forever and ever. You have seen in this part, let's come back to Revelation chapter 13. You have seen how John said, he stood upon the sand of the sea. And then as he looked, they saw the beast rising up out of the sea. 
And then he saw that this beast was a monstrous beast, terrible, a terrible creature. That he said he saw in the beastly form this last world political power that shall rule all over the nations of the world at the end of time. And then by the way he describes him as having seven heads and ten horns and then upon those ten horns there are ten crowns and upon the heads the name of blasphemy. As we look at Revelation chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 it tells us in chapter 17 verse 9 of Revelation here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman seated verse 10 and there are seven kings. Five are falling, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. I'm sure by now you are getting a feel of what we're reading about. It says that the seven kings, those are the seven heads of this beast. And it tells us five of those kings have come and gone. That's what it means by saying five are falling. Which five are falling? It's talking about the kings that trained before, the kingdoms that came before, the empires that came before. Number one, the Egyptian Empire. Number two, the Assyrian Empire. Number three, the Babylonian Empire. Number four, the Persian Empire. Number five, the Greek Grecian Empire. All those have come and gone. Five are falling. And then he said, one is. Which one is that? The Roman Empire. Because that was the empire that was reigning at the time that John the Beloved wrote and the time that he lived. And then he said, and one is yet to come. One is yet to come. The final political dominion is yet to come. That's the kingdom and the dominion of the Antichrist. The world government in its ultimate final form. And it says in chapter 17, verse 12, look at this, 17, verse 12, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. It's telling us that at the final end, eventually there will be ten nations, and there will be ten kingdoms, and these ten kingdoms will form a united kingdom under the Antichrist. And then it says that they will rule with the Antichrist or the beast. That's the final world ruler. He will rule with power and the authority of Satan. Before I go to point number two, we're talking about the Antichrist. And we're talking about this personality, the Antichrist, that will come. It's still to come in the future. But the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And that's why you as a believer, we should not be ignorant. In fact, we are told in 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, I'm looking at verse 3. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. We whereof ye have heard that it shall come, and even now already is it in the world. The Antichrist is coming, but then he's sending forth some Antichrists, some of his junior brothers, some of his sons and daughters, some of the people that have the spirit of the beast and the spirit of the Antichrist. He says, you have heard that the Antichrist will come. And the, the spirit of the Antichrist is already here in the world. Already in the world. In 2 John verse 7. 2 John verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. It says there are many in the world already, and they are operating with the spirit of the Antichrist. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, you have heard that the Antichrist should be with a capital A, the final one, the final political power. The one that will galvanize all the governments of the world together. The one that will rule with, with real force and wickedness. You have heard that he will come. The Antichrist. And then he says, even now are there many Antichrists. Even now are there many that have the spirit of the Antichrist. It says, whereby we know it is the last time. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 3. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, that is the final day of the coming of Christ, will not come except there come a falling away first. How will that falling away first? How will it happen? The spirit of the Antichrist will be walking many people and they'll be campaigning for the final Antichrist to come and they'll be preparing the minds of people for the Antichrist to come and it says over here there'll be a falling away force and that man of sin will be revealed the son of perdition the man of sin the son of perdition is the Antichrist he'll be revealed after the ones that have the spirit of the Antichrist they have gone forth all over the world campaigning and you know raising up churches and raising up false religion and whatever and then they turn the minds of the people away from the sound preaching of the gospel who opposeth him, verse 4, and exalteth himself above all that is called God and all that is worshipped, so that he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. When the Antichrist eventually comes, he'll say, don't look for God anywhere. He'll say he is there. And he is the God. He is the God that the people are to worship. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. You know why the Antichrist has not come in full force right now? There is something, there is somebody withholding him, delaying him, hindering him. In verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. That is, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And you find that in the minds of people, they are against Christ. They're against the gospel of Christ. They're against the pattern of the life of Christ. They're against the ministry of Christ. Their mind, their hearts is tuned against the Lord. And it is a spirit of Antichrist walking in them. It is a mystery of iniquity that's ready at work. Only he who now letteth, hindereth, will let, will hinder, until he be taken out of the way. Because the church is still here. Because the bride of Christ is still here. That is why the Antichrist is not given the permission, the allowance to, to go out full, in full force. And then in verse 8, and then shall the wicked be revealed after the church is gone. After the rapture has taken place, then shall the Antichrist, that wicked one, that prince of fierce countenance, that wicked one shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Do you remember what you are reading in Revelation? That that beast... The Antichrist, it is a dragon, the old serpent, the devil, Satan, that gives him the power to operate. That's exactly what he's saying here. Him, the Antichrist, whose coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they shall believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Well, we've studied about the Antichrist that is coming. Let's, let's go further now and look at the profanity and the short period of the Antichrist. In Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 13, I'm reading to you from verse 4 through to verse 6. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. The dragon, that's the devil, is the one that gave power to the beast, to the Antichrist. And the people of the world, they will worship him. And they worship the beast also. As they were worshipping Satan, they were worshipping the Antichrist as well. After all, Satan has put the Antichrist there and is sitting right there in the temple in Israel. And then he's saying, he is God. And then the people say, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? That is, the people surrender their lives, they surrender their hearts, they surrender everything they have because they say, how can you fight against him? How can you fight against him and win? Who is able to make war with him? In verse 5, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Although he will really manifest a brutal, evil, satanic, wicked power, yet it's for a short time. He knows that his time is short. It will be for 42 months. And then it says in verse 6, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. 
to blaspheme his name and his, and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Again, let us uh, turn to Daniel because Daniel clears up uh, these things for us as well. And as you compare scripture with scripture, you see exactly where the scripture is telling us that the world is headed, where the world is going, and how the world is getting prepared for the final prince of fear's countenance, the one that shall come, the Antichrist, the great final political power that will rule over this world. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 8, Daniel chapter 7 verse 8, I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. The great things is referring to there is great blasphemy against the Lord. Look at verse 25 of that same chapter, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. That's what we're told in Revelation chapter 13, that he'll speak blasphemy against God. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He'll make war with them. He'll wage war, battle against them. He'll wear them out. And then it says, he will think to change the times and the laws. He wants to change the worship of God. And he doesn't want the people to worship the God of Israel. And he will try to change and think to change and plan to change the laws and the times. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. We're told in chapter 11 verse 36. Chapter 11 verse 36. We read some of these verses before. But as you read them again, maybe when we read it first, it was new to you. And you are wondering what this will mean. And as you read over and over the same passages, you get to understand what is being revealed unto us. In, in uh, Daniel chapter 11 verse 36, And the king shall do according to his will. He shall do according to his will. Whatever he wants to do. And he does it with force. With nobody being able to stop him or contradict him. And he shall do according to his will. And shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. He will magnify himself above every God. What does that mean? There are many religions in the world. Uh, there is, you know, the religion of Christianity and other religions uh, that you know about and other ones that you don't know. And all the gods that all those religious people are worshipping, various, various gods that they worship, he'll exalt himself above them and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods against the God of heaven, against the Almighty, and shall prosper. He will succeed until the indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done. That he is eventually will come to his end. Now Daniel tells us actually that this will be at the time of the end. At the time of the end. In Daniel chapter 12, reading from verse 7, I had the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time and times and, and an half. You see, every time he's telling us, this period we're talking about is the last three and a half years of the great tribulation. A time plus times plus half a time. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, that is, when he would have waged war against the Israelites, the holy people, the, ele the elected people of God, when he would have waged war against them to defeat them, all these things shall be finished. That is, at the end of that time, it will be the time when the Lord eventually will come and the deliverer will show up and come to Zion, and then Israel will be saved. The might and the power of the Antichrist will conquer and subdue the hearts of the kings of the world and subdue the people of the world. They will worship the dragon, the devil, who will be the power behind the beast that is the power behind the Antichrist. The people of the world will see the Antichrist as irresistible, invincible, unconquerable. And that's why they'll be asking the question, who is able to fight against the beast? Who is able to make war against him? 
he will be so mighty and powerful that he, there, there are seven things we have outlined on your outline there that he will do. Number one, he will conquer the nations. He will conquer the nations. Number two, he will overcome the Jews. He will kill the two witnesses that you'll find in Revelation chapter 11. And he will change times and laws. He will do us as he will for a period of time, for a short time, three and a half years. He will control the money, the commerce of that time. And he will control the kings of the earth and make all the nations of the earth to fear him. Already we have read all those references in uh, Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 8, and Daniel chapter 11. Let's go back to Revelation. In Revelation chapter 11, you will see part of what he will do. Revelation chapter 11, I'm reading to you there from verse 7. Here it says, and when they have finished their testimony, that is the truth. The two uh, great uh, prophets that the Lord was saying, his two witnesses. It says, The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and the kindreds and the tongues and the nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a an half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets, these two witnesses, tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and had the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And he had a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up unto heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And so you see that at that time, the Antichrist will really do terrible, terrible things. As we come to Revelation chapter 13, and we look at verse 17, the Antichrist together with the, uh, together with the false prophet, uh, in, in conjunction with the dragon, the devil, uh, they will control the commerce of this world. Revelation chapter 13, verse uh, 17, and no man might buy or sell. Except save he that had, that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And will control the kings of the earth and make them afraid in verse 4. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him. In verse 7 and it was given unto him to make war with the saints with the people of Israel and to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all the kindreds and the tongues and nations. And so you see that it will, it's going to be a terrible, terrible time. Now let's, uh, before I uh, go to the next point, uh, you think about the worship of this beast at that time. And remember what I've told you, and I've emphasized it over and over, that the Antichrist casts a shadow before him. That is, the spirit of the Antichrist is at work even today. And he tells us that at that time, when the Antichrist will really come in full flesh, he will cause the people actually to worship him and to worship uh, the Antichrist and to worship the devil. Look at Revelation chapter 13 verse 4. They worshipped the dragon. They worshipped the devil. They worshipped Satan. They worshipped that old serpent, the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast because of the great military power and because of the great force and the might. They said, oh, are you going to resist him? And therefore, there's only one thing to do, surrender and yield and give yourself to him and worship him. And then in verse 8 it says, and all that dwell upon there shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The people of the world, the sinners, they will worship the Antichrist. In uh, 2 Thessalonians, once again, chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, reading verses 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. A falling away first. You see what the devil is doing? The devil is preparing the time for the Antichrist because he's the one that is going to give power and authority to the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist eventually comes, he'll make the people of the world to worship him. 
And that's not going to happen suddenly. Right now, even before the time of the rapture, there is a falling away first. If you look at some churches that stood on sound doctrine many, many years ago, and it stood on salvation by grace, and it stood on the doctrine of sanctification, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And they believed in being baptized in the Holy Ghost after you have been sanctified and purified. They believed in restitution. They believed in one man and one wife. They believed in righteousness and uprightness in life. And they used to believe in the totality of the word of God. If you have seen what is happening, little by little, little by little, the doctrines are watered down. Little by little, the Christian life is diluted. Little by little, separation between husband and wife is permitted. Little by little, divorce and remarriage has come in. Little by little, sin has come in. And sin is not just practiced in the secret. Sin is coming in in the open. And little by little, there's nobody in those uh, many other churches preaching against sin. Little by little, the fear to even preach against sin and against evil and compromise, the fear is in the hearts of those preachers, of those pastors and those leaders. Little by little, even these evangelists and preachers that are well, well known all over the world, they have watered down everything. Little by little, the ground is being prepared for the Antichrist that nobody will want to hear the real sound word of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's going to be falling away first. And after the people are falling away from Christ and falling away from the truth and falling away from sound doctrine, it will not be difficult when the Antichrist comes and is performing miracles. And it's calling fire from heaven. And there are great, great miracles that the people are wondering. It's even giving life to an image that has been made uh, to represent uh, the Antichrist and the beast. And then the first prophet is able to command uh, miracles to come. And people are rushing after miracles. The falling away is happening already. And then it will be climax at the time of the Antichrist. And then it says over here, it says, uh, except they are coming falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Then it will come, who opposes and exalted itself above all that is called God. And then he will not come in the open. He will say, all the God you have been calling upon, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, forget it. The God you have been calling upon, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, forget it. He is the one. And then he sets himself there. And because the people have been falling and falling and falling, and they have come to this climax now, it will not be easy for them to resist. They will worship him. And then he says, or that is worship. So that he has God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, is the one that they are to worship. And at the time of the great tribulation, chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, verse 20, they actually begin to worship the devil. In uh, chapter 9, verse 20, and the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their selves. There will be no repentance at all. And then judgment will come. Judgment will come. Because of that worship of the devil and worship of the Antichrist, the judgment will come. Sephaniah chapter 1. In Sephaniah chapter 1, we're looking at it from verse 4. Sephaniah chapter 1, very near to the end of the Old Testament. Chapter 1, verse 4. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of Kemarim, and with the priests, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship, and them that swear by the Lord, that swear by Malcolm, that is these people, they say, was this one in by the Lord? It is still the God of heaven we're worshipping, and yet they'll be worshipping another God. And them that turn back from the Lord. Uh, there'll be some backsliders at the time of the great tribulation. At this time now, they're falling and falling and falling. 
And then you are preaching to them and pleading with them, come back to the Lord, come back to the Lord. What are you gaining by your backsliding? If you die in the far country as a prodigal son, you'll be lost forever, but you'll not hear. And then the rapture will take place, and the people of God will go away. And then the rapture has taken place at the time that they are backsliders. They turn their back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, no inquired from him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the day of the Lord has, has appeared, the day the Lord, the Lord has prepared a sacrifice, and he has bid his guest, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. At that time, the Lord will examine the people. And see so all the worldly dressing they have, the worldly attitude they have, and the demonic things they have given themselves to. And God says, I will punish them. And in verse 9, and in the same day, will I punish all those that live on the threshold. The people that uh, practice rascality. They become rascal. They're violent. And it's like, you know, no respect for the house of God, no respect for God. God says, I'll punish them. And at that time, when the Antichrist will do as he wills, he'll be a man of his own mind, a man of his own will. And the people of the world at that time, too, since uh, the leader is, you know, a man of his own will and is not subjected to God, he too, will, the people of the world will be a man of their own will. They'll, do, they'll, they'll, they'll be a rascal. They'll be violent. They'll be wicked in the house of God at that time. And God says, I will punish them because they have filled the master's houses with violence and deceit. And that's why the Lord is warning us and is telling us that we should beware because at this time now, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And those who accept the spirit of the Antichrist to walk in them now, when the rapture takes place, they miss it forever. And then he tells us in Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, we're looking at verse 9. And the third angel that I followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. If anybody worships the Antichrist, if anybody worships the spirit of the Antichrist, follows the spirit of the Antichrist, either today or at that time, it says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of of his indignation and it shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night to worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name I pray the Lord will preserve us and will save us and keep us away from the worship of that spirit of Antichrist in Jesus' name. We come to point number three, the program and the sealed perdition of the Antichrist. The, the program and the sealed perdition of the Antichrist. In Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 13, I'm reading to you from verse 7. It says, and it, came, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kingdom, all, all kindreds and tongues and nations. Here he's talking about uh, the, the program of the Antichrist, that actually he'll be given power. The Antichrist deriving his power from Satan will fight all who will believe in Christ and stand for righteousness at that time. All the people at that time that will stand against his policies during the great tribulation, he will also fight against the Jews. He will fight actually against all the nations of the world and he will overcome them. He will subdue them all. All who will not subdued, submit to him will be killed. In verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him and whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It tells us that it will be a terrible time, actually. And uh, as he makes war with the remnant of the people at that time, look at chapter 12 of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 17. 
And a dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her, of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. At the time of the great tribulation, that will be the time when God will face the people of Israel. I'm sure you understand that this is majorly now the time of the Gentiles. We are Gentiles. All people that are not Israelites are Gentiles. And at this time, we have the privilege as Gentiles to believe on the Lord and to stay with the Lord. And the Jewish people now, they are not believing the Lord after the rapture has taken place and the Gentile church will have been taken away. Then the Lord will face the children of Israel. At that time, they'll believe in God and they'll believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says in that Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. The remnant of the seed of the woman. That is, some of the Jewish people, they keep the commandments of God. They are born again. They are saved. They have changed lives. And they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 25. Romans 11 verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles becoming. That is, the Jewish people, they are blind to the truth. They are blind to the gospel. They are blind to the way of salvation. But the blindness will continue only to the time of the fulfillment of the Gentiles until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming. And so in verse 26, and so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. That is at that time when Christ himself when he will be about to return the church had been taken away and those uh, jewish people they are suffering under the terror of the antichrist at that time will they call upon the lord and then the deliverer will come for them the savior will come for them then it says in verse 27 for this is my covenant unto them that i shall take i shall take away their sins then he tells us that at that time, the devil will fight them, the Antichrist will fight them, but they will keep on and remain with the Lord. It tells us in Daniel once again, we'll go back to Daniel, and we're looking at Daniel chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 21. Daniel chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 21. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 21, it tells us, And I, be, I beheld the same one made war with the saints and prevailed against them. It's talking about the war that he will fight, that the Antichrist will fight against the saints of God, against the people of Israel, and he will prevail against them until, in verse 22, the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus, he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces, and the ten horns out of this kingdom, and the ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and it shall be diverse from the fourth, and he shall subdue three kings, in verse 25, and I shall speak, he shall speak great words against the most high and shall swear shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his son until a time and times and the dividing of time and so you see that at that time when this uh, fellow will come he will fight against the people of Israel and he will overcome some of them but thank God he will not overcome everybody I said, thank God you will not overcome everybody. In Revelation chapter 15, reading from verse 2. Revelation chapter 15, reading from verse 2. It tells us, and I saw a seat where a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had got him victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the halves of God. And they sang in new, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, true and uh, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints, 
who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. There will be those who will believe on the Lord, and they will stand on that final day. They will stand and they will not uh, be allow themselves to be destroyed by the evil one. They will not allow themselves to be uh, conquered by the evil one. Whatever persecution will come, they will stand. But please understand, we're talking majorly about the Jews. Don't say, well, if I don't uh, get through now, if I don't get saved now, later at that time, I'll do my best and get saved. If you're not able to make it now, when there's freedom of religion, you're not able to make it now. When we're able to come together and study the Bible, you're not able to make it now. When we can pray together with you, you're not able to make it now. When there are thousands of believers all around you, are you going to make it at that time? When the Antichrist will force everybody to worship him and when you'll not be able to buy yourself except to take the mark of the beast if you are going to get saved here is the time that's why the lord is saying in chapter 13 of revelation chapter 13 revelation verse 9 if any man have an ear let him hear if anyone has ear to hear, let him hear. You have heard the word of salvation and the word of the gospel, the word of repentance, the word of restitution, and the word of righteousness, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If you are going to get saved and get sanctified and get holy, this is the time. Tomorrow may be too late for you. In verse 10, he that leadeth, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. If you lead any other person to captivity in sin, if you lead anyone to backsliding, if you lead anyone to fall, if you discourage anyone from getting saved, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity himself. If at this time of preparing for the coming of the Lord, so we can make it at the rapture. If you lead other people into captivity and they become caged in the, in the cage of the devil and they're not able to stand for the Lord, you too, if you hinder, if you hinder other people from making the rapture, you cannot make it. And then it says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. It says, here is the patience and the perseverance and the face of the saints and let me follow through with you on this word he that has ears to hear let him hear who are those people the people that have ears to hear it's not everybody that hears in isaiah chapter 42 isaiah chapter 42 i'm reading to you from verse 20 isaiah chapter 42 reading from verse 20 seeing many things thou observest not Opening the ears, but he heareth not. And that's why the Lord is saying, we're studying this about the Antichrist, and the Antichrist is coming, and it's going to be a terrible time. And the Lord is saying, wake up, be at alert, see what you need to see, hear what you need to hear. He that has ears, let him hear. And then he says, there are even people that are trying to open the ears of other people. That's people like me, people like preachers, pastors, teachers of the word of God. They preach and they try to make other people understand. They see many things, they learn many things, they instruct many in many ways, and they show other people that the time has come. The rapture is going to take place, and the Antichrist is coming, and the great tribulation will happen. They open the ears of others, and they open the eyes of others. They themselves do not see, and they themselves do not prepare, and they themselves do not hear. Look at this in verse 20. Let me read it, read it again. Seeing many things, but thou observest observeth not opening the ears but he heareth not that's why the lord is telling us to be very careful these bible studies were hearing so that we will not hear in vain so that you will not put your finger in the mouth at that time and say ah they said so we learned it i was at the bible study why didn't i take note i had ears why didn't i hear look at matthew chapter 11 verse 15. matthew chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 15. here jesus said he that has ears to hear let him hear this is the time to hear the word of god this is the time to give yourself to the lord he that has ears to hear let him hear mark chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 23 and verse 24. Mark chapter 4, verse 23, verse 24. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. 
And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. Take heed what you hear. All that you have heard today, all you have been hearing in the Bible study, take heed to these things that you are hearing. Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication. The Lord is saying, yes, you are hearing the word of God. Yes, you are coming to church. And yet, I have a few things against you. And in verse 15, so as thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate, repent, or else I will come unto you. Quickly, I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that has an ear, let him hear. By the grace of God, we will hear. I said we will hear. Already we have learned today that judgment is coming. And the question is, where will you be on that day? When the rapture takes place, where will you be? Will you be among the number, among the people that will go with the Lord? Or will you be left behind to face the terrors and the wrath of God and the indignation of the devil at the time of the great tribulation? When judgment day is drawing near, where will you be? When the great tribulation time arrives, where will you be? And when, they, when men and women themselves, when they are forced to worship the Antichrist and the beast, where will you be at that time? How will it be with your poor soul? When the wicked men, God's wrath shall see, where will you be? And when rocks and mountains flee, where will you be? When the hills and the mountains flee away, where will you be? When all the works of men are burnt in fire, where will you be on that day? When heaven and ash I will roll away like a scroll, where will you be? And when, where will you be? When God in anger shall bring his wrath and indignation upon this world, where will you be on that day? And when all the saints of the realm shall stand forever, blessed at God's right hand, where will you be? When all all troubles are over and all the conflicts are past and the saints of God are rejoicing in heaven where will you be when the dragon and the beast are cast into the lake of fire where will you be when Christ shall reign from shore to shore and peace abideth forevermore where will you be rise up and answer to that question where will you be on that day the lord is coming the judgment is about to fall right now and the great tribulation is about to start after the rapture has taken place the rapture can take place anytime from now where will you be on that day where will you be on that day where will you be on that day are you ready are you ready are you ready for the judgment day are you ready for when that day will come you have had it over and over and over are you making yourself ready or are you careless are you careless remember as it was in the time of noah so shall it be when the son of man shall come they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage and they were planting and they, they were reaping and yet the judgment came upon them unawares where will you be on that day are you careless with christianity now are you careless with christ now you are hearing the word of god and you are not responding and you are not born again how will you escape if you neglect the great salvation there is a great day coming, a great day coming. There is a great day coming by and by when the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? There is a sad day coming. A sad day coming. There is a sad day coming by and by when the sinner shall hear his doom depart. I know you not. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you saved? Are you ready? Are you sanctified? Are you ready? Have you made your restitution? Are you ready? Are you washing in the blood of the Lamb? Are you ready? Are you serving the Lord? Are you ready? Are you sincere with the Lord? Are you ready? Are you having the mind of Christ? Are you having the heart of holiness and righteousness? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Here is the time to call upon the Lord. Let him that has ears hear. Let him that has ears hear. Let him that has ears, you have ears to hear the warning. You have ears to hear the sound of the trumpet. Let him that has ears hear, hear the word of God. The judgment day is about to come. And uh, you have learned about it already. You have seen all of it already. And the Lord is telling you, it can come any time from now. It can come any time from now. Call upon the name of the Lord. If you have not been saved, give your heart to the Lord and be saved today.
If you have not been born again, give yourself to the Lord and be born again today. If you have not been sanctified and you still have that old dynamic nature and that uh, heart that is stubborn against the will of God, the revelation of the word of God, come unto the Lord today and say, Lord, I give myself to you. Lord, I surrender myself to you. And if you are still following the way of the spirit of the Antichrist, that is the way of violence and the way of wickedness. Remember, remember all the people that operate their lives on the basis of the spirit of the Antichrist. They will not make it on that final day when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and the people of God shall be raised incorruptible and go to heaven. Only the people that have the mind of Christ, not the spirit of the Antichrist, will be able to make it on that day. Where will you stand? Where will you stand? Where will you be when that day will come? Certainly it will the Lord before you go.